I want to start by sharing my personal reflection about what about Excel and what it means. I believe there are four kinds of attitude that one can have towards life and which shape our actions. The first, contented and appreciative, valuing what we have or have achieved. Second, contented and complacent, thinking that we have achieved whatever we could. Third, contented and critical, complaining about everything that one sees as wrong or not good enough. And fourth, contented and constructive, seeking to improve, to make things better for everyone. We must strike a balance among these four kinds of attitudes. The right one in my mind is having both the first and the last in the right mix at the right time. That is, it is important to appreciate what we have, but not to the point of complacency. And at the same time, to be discontented, to feel that things can be better, but not in the destructive but constructive way. We must be prepared to put our minds to the issues, roll up our sleeves, rally people around us to create a better future. This, to me, in a nutshell, is what suggestions and innovations in our MOE Excel movement are about. A constructive spirit of discontent born out of the basic values and competencies described in our 20, 21st century competencies framework. In particular, the values of care, respect and responsibility. Only when we care enough and feel responsible enough about something do we want to improve it. And only when we show respect for others, for their ideas, that we can work together to seek out and combine the best ideas and to adopt this across schools. Our teachers and school leaders undertake this Excel journey not to win awards per se, but because of the values they have as professionals, always working towards better education outcomes for our children. Today, we showcase a sample of what they have achieved to improve teaching and learning inside and outside the classrooms. They role model what they seek to inculcate in our students, the 21st century skills of inventive thinking, digital literacy, and collaboration. Created as an annual event in 2005, MOE Excel, Excel Fest is first and foremost about celebrating this creative journey our teachers have undertaken, taking risks to innovate for a cause they deeply believe in, that is, to lead, care, and inspire our young. Second, the event is open to the public, and it is also about reaching out to our parents and the broader community, to showcase the innovation in schools and to engage parents on issues of interest to them through workshops and seminars. This year, our theme for Excel Fest is Nurturing the Whole Child, Opportunities for All. It encapsulates what we want for our children. Nurturing the Whole Child reflects our focus on holistic education to enable our children to be, able to be ready for the future. At the heart of it, education is about developing the whole person. Beyond academic development, we want to help our children acquire, the, acquire sound values and develop character. The announcements I made three weeks ago at the Committee of Supply, reframing the community involvement program as values in action and changes to the EduSafe Awards, underline MOE's commitment to strengthening character and citizenship education. In dialogue sessions with parents and students, I received many expressions of support and affirmation for this. Opportunities for All reflects our intent to make every school a good school so that we can provide a good education for our children across all schools and cater effectively to their diverse talents and learning styles. We have been providing additional resources and more autonomy to schools to allow them to develop more customised programmes for their students. Our schools and educators have made good use of these resources to, del to deliver effective outcomes creatively. Some of these projects are on display today. Many of these innovations also came about 
as a result of meaningful collaboration with various stakeholders among schools, between schools and parents, and between schools and the community at large. This is very powerful because when different stakeholder groups come together, the net effect is greater collective insights, greater accessibility to knowledge, and more shared resources. These innovations are very often more effective in meeting the needs of the different stakeholders. They are also more likely to be transferable to other schools. In the words of internationally renowned thought leader on education, Michael Fullen, this contributes to building our, I quote, collective, collaborative capacity and have the effect of lifting the quality of the entire education system. There are many interesting examples of collaborations leading to innovations which are being showcased at this year's Excel Fest. Let me share a few such collaborations involving schools, parents and the community. First, collaboration among schools. A group of primary school teachers from South Zone Cluster 4 came together to integrate aspects of health education syllabus into PE lessons in 2010. They were driven by the desire to explore ways to, better, to deliver better learning outcomes for their students. Many innovative and useful practices were born out of this collaboration. At St. Margaret's Primary, one of the schools in the cluster, students learn how to measure their heart rate, not in the classroom, but after their PE activities. And at CHIJ Kellogg, the teaching of first aid is incorporated into school camps. With this authentic learning experience, these primary school students can now better appreciate this practical way of taking care of their own health, itself an important life skill. As we can see, Having teachers come together to collaborate can generate simple yet significant ideas in how we promote effective learning. Over at North Zone Cluster 5, a new professional learning community for character and citizenship education was set up last year among six secondary schools to build a capacity of teachers to deliver national education and character development programs. Through this platform, Learning and sharing opportunities were created. Learning journeys to other schools with good practices and initiatives were organised and resources were freely shared. This collaboration has helped the teacher participants deepen their insights, enrich one another with their experiences and build a network for professional development. I quote what Mrs Lim Huizhe, HOD Character Development from Riverside Secondary School, who chairs this learning community set of her experience. It is not just about learning one another's best practices. It allows open and reflective dialogues to share honestly about our not-so-successful experiences, programs or initiatives. It is through such honest sharing that we learn and grow collectively. And indeed, we learn not just from our successes, but also from our failures. Let me next touch on collaborations with our stakeholders. As we all know, Parents play the most important role in a child's education. Therefore, there is much value for schools to involve and collaborate with parents in helping to reinforce what is taught in the classroom at home. The home environment is particularly critical to a child's language learning. The Chinese language teachers at Tampanese North Primary School therefore came up with a program to help students who are weak in the Chinese language through parental support. They design sentence cards with both Han Yu Pinyin and their English meaning for the students to take home to read aloud and to study their characters. Just one card a day. Every parent is given a checklist to indicate when their child has read the sentence out each day and which the teacher checks on. Through this simple innovation, even parents who are not so proficient in their language are able to support their children's learning. Some parents even felt encouraged to improve their Chinese alongside their children. And for those of you who are interested, these cards can be provided to you too. This has a virtuous effect of creating a more conducive environment for the child to acquire the language. The mother of Racine, a primary six student of the school, shared that her son had no interest to learn the language in the past because there were simply too many words in the textbook. 
With the help of this program, she observed that her son has made improvements in his Chinese and now likes the subject. Likewise, the community at large has much to offer, especially in providing authentic learning experiences. An initiative called Home 3 Trail, involving 12 East Zone Cluster 3 schools and Tampines West Community Club, serves as an example of how schools can inculcate values in their students by working with the community. Under this project, National Education Student Ambassadors organise tours for Tampines residents to various sites within their neighbourhood. This include places of worship, welfare homes and historical sites such as the Changni Museum. By serving the residents and helping them to understand the people and places in their neighbourhood, the students put into action the values of responsibility and caring for the community, as well as promote respect and harmony within the community. This is in line with our belief that values are best inculcated when students are able to put them into action instead of just being taught about them in the classroom. As students reflect on their experiences, they realise that they too can contribute meaningfully and therefore have a stake in the community. As Mr. Dennis Tan, as Mr. Dennis Tan Vice Chairman of Tampines West Community Club puts it, and I quote, Besides promoting better understanding between schools and residents, the programme, by giving students a sense of belonging to their community, contributes in its own small way to our nation-building process. Unquote. I've shared just a few examples of innovations in our schools. There are many other innovations which I believe have the potential to benefit all students if they are widely adopted across our schools. To encourage greater collaboration and diffusion of innovations, the Innovation Adoption Platform was launched at last year's Excel Fest to capitalise on Excel Fest as a marketplace for the exchange of innovative ideas. The Innovation Adoption Platform is a mechanism that provides support for schools to adopt projects from across clusters and zones and a way for schools with innovative projects to coach and help other schools adopt their innovations. At last year's Excel Fest, 18 projects were adopted by 21 other schools. This platform provides a structured process to ensure that the transfer of knowledge takes place over a sustained period of collaboration. Funding is available to support the adopting schools in implementing the project, tailored to meet their own needs and challenges. Schools which had come out with the innovation also get a top-up to their innovation funds to spur more innovations. Earlier this month in Parliament, I shared how Raffles Girls Primary School adopted the m and iPod Touch programme which is an innovation from Yishun Primary. I will now highlight two other interesting examples supported by last year's innovation adoption platform. The first is the Chongqing High uh, Yishun's adoption of Pingyi Secondary School's restorative practices, a cornerstone of Pingyi's pupil management strategy. These practices are based on the belief that engaging all parties to resolve a problem or conflict leads to a more enduring solution than simply imposing a well-established punishment on the offender. So when a student commits a disciplinary offence, such as being rude to a teacher, the student is made to reflect on his or her actions and come out with a mutually agreeable solution to make amends for the misbehaviour. With the successful adoption by Chongqing Hai, over 80% of, the, of their teachers felt that it helped them in the classroom management. The second example is that of St. Anthony's Connoisseur Primary's adoption of elements of Badot South Secondary School's Cyber Wellness Program. Through the innovation platform, students from Badot South Secondary Infocom Club taught their counterparts from St. Anthony's Connoisseur Primary how to create games to promote cyber wellness. These students then developed their own games for their peers to enjoy and in the process, learns about cyber wellness. Given the positive feedback from schools and teachers, we will continue with the innovation adoption platforms this year. We will expand the number of projects that can be funded and include all projects featured at Excel Fest 
and not just those at this exhibition. With more of such collaborations and innovations, I hope to see schools becoming hotspots, buzzing with energy and good ideas, and acting on these ideas swiftly and thoughtfully. I would like to see more of them to be closely linked to other hotspots, to tap, to tap on one another's strengths and extend their strength through collaborations with various stakeholders. Ultimately, such networks of innovation and collaborations will lead to a system of many good schools that cater more effectively to the needs of their students. Finally, I would like to offer my heartiest congratulations to today's Energy Award winners. The Energy Awards recognize ground-up innovations that have created significant value for our students. I'm pleased to note that the number of submissions from schools has increased to 385 from 343 the previous year. Of this, 40 have won awards. For the HQ category, out of 53 submissions, 19 have won awards. It is apt to note that the innovation adoption platform I mentioned earlier is itself an innovation by HQ to support schools. It underscores the pervasive culture of innovation across MOE and schools that we must continue to promote. I would like to congratulate the 31 individuals and teams from schools and HQ who will receive the Best Suggestion Awards. Innovation is a journey, a quest, to find new and better ways to enable our students to learn holistically. The most critical partner in this journey is our spirit and mindset, the spirit of constructive discontent and an abiding belief that we can do better, even as we appreciate what we have achieved. The innovation spirit helps us to be reflective and inventive educators, living out the values and competencies that we hope to inculcate in our young. I wish everyone an exciting and fruitful journey ahead. Thank you.